And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. Larry will be performing the traditional Argentinian ballad, The Dance of the Cucumber, in its original Spanish. Bob the Tomato will translate. Miren al pepino. Watch the Bien cucumber. Como se See mueve. how he moves. Como un león. Like a lion. Tras un Chasing a mouse. Miren al pepino. Watch the cucumber. Que suave es oh, how smooth his motion. Es como like butter en un on a pelón. bald monkey. Miren al pepino. Watch the cucumber. Los vegetales. All the vegetables. Envien a su amigo. Envy como friend. él quiere bailar. Wishing to dance as he. Pepino bailarín. Dancing cucumber. Pepino bailarín. Dancing cucumber. Pepino bailarín. Dancing cucumber. Baila, baila dance, ya. dance, yeah. Miren el tomate. Look at the tomato. No es triste. Isn't it sad? Él no puede bailar. You can't dance. Pobre tomate. Poor tomato. Él desearía poder bailar como el pepino. He wishes he could dance like the cucumber. Libre y suavemente. Free and smooth. Pero no puede danzar. But he, he can't. Okay, stop the music. What do you mean I can't dance? I can dance? Well, what about Uncle Louie's polka party? Didn't you see me dancing at Uncle Louie's polka party? No comprendo. No comprendo? I'll show you no comprendo! Mom! Dad! Look over here! Get a picture of me next to the cucumber in authentic Argentinian garb! Okay, Junior. But we better hurry. I think the dwarves have your mother confused with someone else. <laughs> Say peas. Peas. Escuchen al pepino. Listen to the cucumber. Oigan su voz fuerte. Como un león. Like a lion. Listo a devorar. About to eat. Escuchen al pepino. Listen to the cucumber. Que dulce es su canto. How sweet his voice. Que sopla su garganta. The breath from his throat is like a chorus of little birdies. Escuchen al pepino. Listen to the cucumber. Los vegetales. All the vegetables. Envíen a su amigo. Como él quiere cantar. Pepino cantador. Singing cucumber. Pepino cantador. Singing cucumber. Pepino cantador. Singing cucumber. Sing, sing, yeah. Escuchen al tomate. Listen to the tomato. No es triste. Isn't it sad? Él no puede cantar. He can't sing. Pobre tomate. Poor tomato. Él desearía poder cantar. He wishes he could sing. Fuerte y dulce como el pepino. Strong and sweet like the cucumber. Pero no puede. But he can't. Ni siquiera da un silbido. Can't even whistle. All right, that's it, señor. Come over here and let me sing you a song. Adios, amigos. This has been Silly Songs with Larry. Tune in next time to hear Larry sing. Bob is really angry. I hope he doesn't catch me. It's so hard to run with the sombrero on my head. And now it's time for ukulele karaoke with Bob, the part of the show where Bob comes out and sings an ukulele karaoke. Uh, what's going on? You are doing the ukulele karaoke, no? No, I'm on a break. Uh, this is the pirates. They are busy with the rest of the show. But I, I, I don't even know the song. Your lyrics, monsieur. Bring in the props. Uh, but wait, I... I... You're out of breeze, monsieur. Hold on a sec. I'm totally unprepared to do a solo. Your backup singers. What? Isn't that the... Oui. They are the Wiggly Turtle Tubies. The Wiggly Turtle Tubies. Uh, they look taller on TV. So do you, Tomato! Uh, but really, this is Larry's gig. I can't just... This show must go on, monsieur. Quick, that is your cue. Just follow along, you will be fine. Let's that turtle, aloha lands. Let's that turtle, dance, dance, dance. Let's that turtle, aloha lands. Let's that turtle, dance, dance, dance. Well, I keep a little turtle at my uncle and my aunt's. My Annie's name is Myrtle, and my island turtle's name is Lance. He doesn't wander far, even if he has a chance. He just plays his ukulele, and he does the hula dance. What? Lance the turtle, aloha Lance. Lance the turtle, dance, dance, dance. Lance the turtle, aloha Lance. Lance the turtle, dance, dance, dance. He threw 
threw a luau barbecue one breezy summer night. Invited all his turtle pals to come and have a weeky bite. The turtle started walking there as Lance began to swing. The one that lived across the street arrived there in the spring. Oh, I get it. Turtles are slow. <laughs> so I took them a long time. <laughs> That's pretty good. Lance and Turtle. Aloha, Lance. Lance the turtle, dance, dance, dance. But Lance just kept on cooking. He was grilling full of glee. He was marinating ribs, cause he likes <gasps> uh, syrup with his feta cheese. Uh, I'm sorry, I. <sighs> Lance's purple turtle shell has ketchup, if you please. Pineapples are shiny, spotted tiki bumblebees. Oh man. Lance and turtle. Aloha, Lance. Lance and Turtle. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, guys, I don't think this is right. It doesn't make any sense. It works for us. <laughs> this song, this song. Uh, there are luscious chocolate fingers spinning slowly in the school. Malay Kalikimaka. Fluffy bunnies driving in the pool. <laughs> Larry, a thousand igloos wax the feet. Spray luggage in the tree. Raining puppies. Flying clown. Flossing Puna Hale. Ow. Oh, forget it. Woohoo! The Pegas Weezy's coconut, the Heeny Yolo leg, White Weenie Whiskey Jenny Sauce, the Megs of Fuzzy Parrot Bag, Paper Plastic Porcupine, the Horsey Makes His Bed, the Huma Huma Nuku Nuku Aboa I Was in Bed. Lance and Turtle, hello, Lance. This has been Ukulele Karaoke with Bob. Tune in next time when Bob says, I'll be in my dressing room. Dance, dance, dance. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. There once was a boy who lived in a house, and the house sat under a tree. By the tree ran a fence that stretched far and wide around the gated community. Can I have my ball? Can you get my ball? I kicked it into the tree. And my ball bounced up. And my ball dropped in to the gated community. Oh, the gated community is where we like to be. Everything's so lovely, your oh, hearts are filled with glee. And when you come to visit, you can stand outside and see what a lovely bunch we are in our gated unity. Um, can I have my ball? Can you get my ball? I kicked it into the tree. And my ball bounced up. And my ball dropped in to the gated community. Oh, the gated community is where we like to be. Our clothes are never dirty and our lawns are always green. And when you come to visit, you can stand outside and see what a tiny bunch we are in our gated unity. The gated community, we think you will agree, is pleasantly devoid of unsightly street and free. Free, free of debris. Gated community, community. Smiles are wide, smiles and comfy custody. And when you come, come to visit, on, you stand outside. outside. What a smiley bunch we are in a gated unity. Oh, the gated community is where ball. we like to be. I Our lives have been made perfect by a happy entrance fee. And when you come to visit, and you can stand outside and see. To the gated community. What a lovely bunch we are. To the gated community. What a happy bunch we are in a gated Been silly songs with Larry. Oh, look, the ball. Tune in next time to hear Larry say thank you. Hi, kids. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. Welcome to Veggie Tales. Today we got a letter from Rachel. Uh, <laughs> huh? uh, what? Prepare to be boarded. Avast, ye regular hosts. We're pirate in this broadcast. Surrender now! Hey. Hi, guys. Oh, wait a minute. You're the pirates who don't do anything. You're not supposed to actually pirate anything. We've changed our ways. We've been convicted. Actually, we've been bored. Not doing anything is boring. 
Arg! Arg! Prepare to be not bored! We're in charge! Arg. You know anything about this? <laughs> well, I knew they were getting antsy. Antsy! Arg! Antsy's in me pantsies! Arg! Oh, look, I'm glad to see you guys are finally doing Arg. stuff, uh, but couldn't you go swap some barnacles or something? Do you have to go this far? Oh, come on, Bob. Oh, we're new at this. Yeah, give us a break. We couldn't think of nothing else. Well, scrapbooking, but that's hardly appropriate. That wasn't an actual suggestion. I'm just saying, you can't lose the memories, man. So you want Larry and me to just step aside while you take over the show? Well, Larry can stay if he puts on his eye patch. <gasps> Arg! Oh, yeah, right. You're a pirate, too. How silly of me to forget. Uh, look, I don't know. Come on, Bob, give us a shot before we sink back into inactivity. Interminable slothfulness. Oh, all right. But I'm staying right here and supervising. Oh, yeah. All right, well, yeah, this is gonna be great. You won't be sorry, Bob. Uh, yeah. Nobody wears an eye patch right. like me. Arg. Uh, read the letter. Oh, uh, thanks, right. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Uh, this is a letter from Rachel Paxton of Muscle Shoals, Alabama. <laughs> Rachel asks, Dear Bob and Larry, I'm in the second grade. Oh, isn't that cute? She's in the second grade. I bet she's adorable. There's a new girl in my class. She's kind of peculiar, and my friends don't like her. I know God wants us to be friends to kids who have no friends, but if I'm nice to her, I might lose my old friends. What should I do? Has she tried throwing a scrapbooking party? That might loosen everybody up. Uh, maybe you can wait until your friends aren't looking and then smile at the new kid. That's it? That's all you got? This is harder than it looks. How did you expect to host the show? Well, we didn't think ahead this far. We only got up to the part where we swiped the letter. Maybe you should help him out a little, Bob. Oh, all right. I think Rachel is asking if God can help her in this situation, or if she'll be worse off by doing what he asks. She's really wondering if she can trust God. Oh, yeah. P.S. Can I trust God? Man, you are so insightful. Wait a minute. I just thought of something. What if we tell Rachel a story? <laughs> that might help. That's worked in the past. I like it. Let's tell her a story. Good one, guys. <gasps> I got it. A true story my granddad once told me. It's an amazing tale of a man named George Mueller. George Mueller? I've heard of him. He trusted God for everything. Shh, don't interrupt. This was a man who trusted God for everything. I'll be over here if you need me. He lived a long time ago in a land far, far away called Bristol, England. My great-grandfather, Simon, was a reporter for the Bristol Snoop, a newspaper of questionable integrity. May I help you? You George Mueller? Indeed. Simon, Bristol Snoop, is it true you're running a school for alien dolphins? What? If my sources are correct, this would be startling news, on par with a turkey born with the head of a cat. What? So you're not denying the fact that you're training extraterrestrial porpoises for less than ideal purposes? I'm considered among my peers to be a genius with a headline. Look, Mr. Simon, is it? We have no dolphins. This is a home for orphans. We look after children who have no parents. Oh, so it's possible their parents are dolphins. What? I mean, you never know. Good night, Mr. Um, Mr. Mueller? Oh, uh, he hello, Emily. Are you going to play the piano? Why, certainly, Emily. I'll be there moment to... Is that a turkey with the head of a cat? Why, yes, it is. That's pretty strange. You know, I thought so myself. Emily, dear, I was just seeing Mr. Simon off. Go ahead and start. I'll be right there. She's adorable. She is indeed. Has a good eye for news. Yes, I suppose she does. Is there anything else, Mr. Simon? Ah, uh, no. Not if you're sure there's nothing extraordinary going on here. Well, there's plenty extraordinary going on here, Mr. Simon, but I'm not sure it's the sort of thing your paper would be interested in. Good night, Mr. Simon. Good night. I think because I'm 
I'm happy. Wonderful, Johnny. I sing because I'm free. For his eyes on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Aha! I knew it! I knew it! That's the first sign of a cover-up, speaking in codes. And I is watching who is Sparrow? Special forces? Covert ops? Oh, there's no conspiracy, Mr. Simon. We're singing a song about God providing for us. God even looks after the sparrows, so we can trust him to look after us. Oh, we believe God called us to start this orphanage with nothing. All you see here has been provided by God through our prayers and trust in him. And I imagine by asking people for lots of donations. Oh, there's nothing wrong with asking for donations, but we've never asked anyone for anything. Never asked anyone for anything? That's right. I felt God wanted me to demonstrate how he could meet our needs without anyone even knowing. So we never asked anyone for anything. Wow, what a wacky way to start out. I bet you're glad that phase is over, huh? Things seem to be humming along now. Oh. George? Hello, dear. We're out of food again. Really? Oh, we have nothing to feed the children for breakfast tomorrow morning? Nothing at all. Not a crumb. Well, we'll have to handle it like we always do. So, how do you handle this? We pray. Pray? You can't just assume breakfast is gonna fall out of the sky. Think about these kids. God will meet our needs. If you like, you may join us for breakfast and see for yourself. Good night, Mr. Simon. Uh, good night, Mr. Mueller. Poor oh, kids. Good morning, Mr. Simon. Good morning, Emily. I brought you something. Gee, thanks. These are dangerous times. Uh-huh. Mr. Simon, so good of you to come. Uh, do come in. Uh, this could be an interesting story. Uh, besides, I'm really hoping those kids get something to eat. Uh, children, we must be on time for school. Are you hungry? Yes, yes sir. sir. So, where's the food? Mary, do we have anything to give them? So what do we do, children? We, we pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank thee for what thou art going to give us to eat. Amen. Look, maybe I can run out and... Uh, uh Mr. Mueller? I, I couldn't sleep last night. Somehow I felt you didn't have bread for breakfast, and the Lord wanted me to send you some. So I got up at 2 a.m. And, and baked some fresh bread. <gasps> oh, thank you so much. You're an answer to prayer. And a speedy one at that. I'm a bit thirsty, sir. Uh, excuse me. My, uh, milk cart just broke down. Mind if I unload some milk so I can fix my wagon? You can have all you want. Have some milk, children. <laughs> oh, yes, please. I'll take some milk. And this same God who takes care of me can supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4, 19, I believe. You can use it in your story if you'd like. Now, Great Grandpa Simon reported some big stories in his day, but this by far was the biggest. And the only one up to that point, I might add, that was independently verifiable. <laughs> that means it was true. And George Mueller would go on to receive money and food to build many more orphanages and help thousands of kids, all without ever asking anyone for anything. He just trusted God to meet their needs every single day. And every single day, God did. And I know he watches me. The end. That was real nice. It was touching yet lighthearted. I was moved. True story, was it? True story. See? I think George Mueller should have prayed for a high-def TV. I'm pretty sure George Mueller knew the difference between a need and a want. Yeah, I could see that. Welp, Rachel, I hope that helps you out. That's all the time we have for today. Ah. Uh...
Uh, 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 hold, hold on. I think it's a little too early to call it quits. Huh? I told the story. Yeah, but it was kind of short. If this were a regular show, we'd do a silly song and then tell another story. Well, this really isn't a regular show, per se. Hey, well, why don't you do the silly song? That's right up your alley. Yeah, but I'm just like a pirate. Well, then do a pirate silly song. Been done, remember? Oh, yeah, did that already. Philippe, the time has come. Mais oui, Jean-Claude, at last. We have written a silly song. And I've been waiting for just the right moment to bring it out. And the moment has arrived. Oh, oh I right. know. Yeah. Now we got a show. Hey, here no. it is. Wait, it's not in French, is it? The language of love? Sadly, no. This song is not for us to sing. Uh, well, who else can sing around here? And now it's time for ukulele karaoke with Bob, the part of the show where Bob comes out and sings an ukulele karaoke. Uh, what's going on? You are doing the ukulele karaoke, no? No, I'm on a break. Uh, this is the pirates. They are busy with the rest of the show. But I, I, I don't even know the song. Your lyrics, monsieur. Bring in the props. Uh, but wait, I... I Monsieur! Hold on a sec. I'm totally unprepared to do a solo. Your backup singers? What? Isn't that the... Oui. They are the Wiggly Turtle Tubies. The Wiggly Turtle Tubies? They look taller on TV. So do you, Tomato! Uh, but really, this is Larry's gig. I can't just... This show must go on, Monsieur. Quick, that is your cue. Just follow along. You will be fine. But... Let's that turtle. Hello, Hollands. Lance and Turtle, dance, dance, dance. Lance and Turtle, aloha, Lance. Lance and Turtle, dance, dance, dance. Well, I keep a little turtle at my uncle and my aunt's. My Annie's name is Myrtle, and my island turtle's name is Lance. He doesn't wander far, even if he has a chance. He just plays his ukulele, and he does the hula dance. What? Lance and Turtle, aloha, Lance. Lance and Turtle, dance, dance, dance. Lance and Turtle, aloha, Lance. Lance and Turtle, dance, dance, dance. He threw a luau barbecue one breezy summer night. Invited all his turtle pals to come and have a weeky bite. The turtle started walking there as Lance began to swing. The one that lived across the street arrived there in the spring. Oh, I get it. Turtles are slow. <laughs> so I took them a long time. <laughs> That's pretty good. Lance and Turtle. Aloha, Lance. Lance and Turtle. Dance, dance, dance. But Lance just kept on cooking. He was grilling full of glee. He was marinating ribs because he likes uh, syrup with his feta cheese. Uh, I'm sorry. I. Lance's purple turtle shell has ketchup, if you please. Pineapples are shiny, spotted tiki bumblebees. Oh, man. Lance and turtle. Aloha, Lance. Lance and turtle. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Hey, guys, I don't think this is right. It doesn't make any sense. It was for us. <laughs> but this song, this song. Uh, there are luscious chocolate fingers spinning slowly in the school. Malay Kalikimaka, fluffy bunnies driving in the pool. <laughs> Larry. A thousand igloos wax the feet, spray luggage in the tree, raining puppies, flying clown, flossing Puna Hale. Ow! Oh, forget it. Woohoo! La Pagas Weezy's coconut! Tahiti yo yo leg! White mini whiskey jetty sauce! Don't make the fuzzy parrot bag! Paper plastic porcupine! The horsey makes his bed! The huma huma nook for nuku abo awas in bed! Lance and Turtle! Hello, Lance! This has been Ukulele Karaoke with Bob. Tune in next time when Bob says... I'll be in my dressing room. Dance, dance, dance! Welcome back to the big event! The victory parade for Gideon! And what an event it is! The music, the floats, the spectacle! It's all here to celebrate one thing! Gideon's extraordinary military victory over the previously undefeated, excessively hairy Midianites! He, he's coming! Yes! The man of the hour! Riding on a tube of floats covered with 10,000 roses! 
The red ones were shipped in from Jerusalem, the white from Bethlehem, and the purple roses came from Cairo. That's a lot of flowers. Indeed it is, but that's a lot of hero. Yes, Gideon, a man who overcame his complete lack of military experience to become not only the hero of the day, but perhaps the greatest Hebrew warrior of all time. I wish I was him. This is a man who laughs at danger, who doesn't know the meaning of the word fear. This is a man who single-handedly defeated an army of more than 30,000 enemy troops. Wait, stop, stop the parade. I'm sorry, what you're saying is nice and all, but that's just not the way it was. This is how it really happened. I was minding my own business, practicing my latest marching band moves, when my life was changed forever. Gideon! Hey, Pipsqueak! Do you mind? Nope, don't mind at all. You guys work on the football, and I'll practice my part in the marching band. We're all on the same team. Yeah, and the game's back on. The drums would be over here going rat a tat tat. And the horns would be over here going doo doo doo. -doo. And then I jump up with my tuba going. Oh! brother! Hey! Ha ha! Yeah, that's real funny, guys. You want to come and get your ball? <laughs> did you say? Hail, mighty man of valor. Oh, yeah, you must be looking for my brothers. Nope, I'm looking for you. I'm an angel. The angels, huh? Well, I'm a warrior. Maybe we'll play your team this year. No, 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 no. I'm a real angel, sent from the Lord above with a message. The Lord, Lord? The same. Huh, pretty cool. <clears throat> now, human. Uh, that'd be you. It is perfectly normal for you to be terrified and confused. Having an angel appear before you is not exactly an everyday occurrence. <laughs> Why'd you laugh like that? It says here I'm supposed to make you feel comfortable. Uh, take a load off. This may take a while. Okie dokie. I am sure you have many questions for me. No, not really. And while there are many things I can do to prove I come from the Almighty, I must note that I can do nothing without God's approval. However, he will allow me to show you a small sample of his splendor, e.g. answers to personal questions, minor miracles, appearing and or disappearing at will. Did you just say e.g.? Yeah, it means for example. Well, then why didn't you just say for example? Because this says e.g. Okay. Frightened human, what kind of sign do you need to prove I am from he who is above all things? Nothing, I already believe you. Really? Because I got at least five more pages here. No, I'm good. You don't need me to fly around? Well, you can if it makes you feel better. Uh, to be honest, I just flew all the way from heaven. I'm a little winded. Then relax. Can I get you something cold to drink? Oh, a lemonade would be fine. Here you go. Thanks. You have no idea what a relief your reaction is. Folks usually freak out, and I end up spending the first week just trying to calm them down. That must get real tiring. You don't know the half of it. You don't need any proof at all? Nope. If you say you're from God, I believe you. Because I got credentials. Check this out. Cool. Can I get one of those? Well, we don't give these out to just anyone, but I'll see what I can do. So, Mr. Angel, what's your message? Here's the skinny. I've been sent from the Lord above to tell you that you have been chosen to lead Israel's army against a ferocious enemy that is even now at your doorstep. Wait, I've been chosen to lead an army? I think there's been a mistake. You're a warrior, aren't you? This? Oh, no, my, my brothers are the real warriors. I'm just the guy you call when you want a victory parade after the battle. I'll go get them. 
God hasn't chosen them. He wants you. But I'm not trained in weapons of war. I'm trained on the tuba. How many wars have ever been won by marching information? You'd be surprised. My brothers are bigger and stronger. He wants you. I'm afraid of the dark. To tell you the truth, so am I. I scream like a girl. Put me in the dark and I do too. He still wants you. Sorry, I just can't do it. You trust that I'm an angel. You trust that I was sent from God. So what's the big problem with doing what he says? I thought you were coming to give me a pep talk. A little well done, good and faithful servant. But this is way out of my league. If you want to hear the Lord say, well done, then you'll have to do what he asks. You're absolutely sure that God has chosen me? Yep. He wants you to defeat the invading Midianites. Well, how many Midianites are we talking about here? That's it? One guy? No problem. When do we start? <laughs> Hold that thought. Take a gander. <laughs> well, it's been nice talking to you. That's beginning to get irritating. Well? Well what? I'm not fighting them. There's no way I can defeat an army that large. It's not your job to defeat them. It's God's. It's your job to trust that he'll do what he says. I'm sorry, but you've just got the wrong guy. God never chooses the wrong guy. Well, this time he made a mistake. God never makes mistakes. Not once? Not one single mistake in all of recorded history? Never! Though, as far as I'm concerned, the jury's still out on spiders. <laughs> Understand, I'm not saying I'll do it. But if I did, I'd need a sign first. A sign? I've got to know absolutely, positively, beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is in this. Me, you believe. But from God, you need a sign? Oh, hit it, boys. Trust that God exists. Just open up your eyes. Did it all with no assist. Don't tell me you're surprised. He made the stars. There's no doubt. Sun and moon. Got a shout. The universe. Inside out. Do not doubt he's real, my friend. Just because he can't be seen. Like the breeze blowing through the trees. He's working in a stream. Solar system's kind of big, but it fits inside his hand. He cares for you, and so it's true. You can trust the great I am. See what? You can trust the great I am. So what'll it be, Gideon? What kind of a sign do you need before you'll trust God? Do you want time to go backwards? Mountains to fall down? Talking vegetables to tell Bible stories? No, I'm thinking I'll lay out a small piece of lamb's wool on the ground. Then, tomorrow morning, if the wool is wet, but the ground around it is dry, I'll know God is in this. Crazy man! The world insists that God exists. He's everywhere you look. The rocks cry out, the heavens shout. It's saving in his book. He made the seas. Yes, sir. All the trees. Oak and bird. The birds and bees. We concur. He helped your father, Abraham, and Isaac, Jacob, too. Ooh. From Jericho to Bethlehem, and now he's helping you. <laughs> He'll keep on helping those he calls. From Paul to Bill and Graham. So step right up and join the cause. You, you can, can trust, trust the great I am. Okay. Put your faith in the great I am. Huh? 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 So, Gideon, now do you trust that God will do what he says he's going to do? Yes, absolutely. After just one more test. 
the Midianites are attacking in just two more days. That's why I'm only asking for one more test. This time, make the fleece dry, but everything around it be wet. Crazy hair! People always want a test. Yeah, they always want a sign. It's good that God's got patience, man, cause you're sure testing mine. He makes sky and oceans blue. The desert dry. Those islands do. You can't lie. You know it's true. I'm talking about the great I am. He's talking about the great I am. Don't doubt. Turn to the shell. I'll figure out what it's all about. And a suit. Here's what to do. God's a friend through thick and thin. You're safe in Make my point. Bo! Hey, what's the big idea? Is it dry? Is, is what dry? The, the fleece? Oh, hey, it is! Crazy man! The fleece is dry, but the ground is soaking wet. It's amazing! It's a miracle! Hey, guess what? God has chosen me! You don't say. He wants me to lead the troops to victory over the invading horde. As I live and breathe. So let's get going. And just in the nick of time. Say, where do we pick up our troops? So, uh, Join God's uh, army. Get a free flashlight. Here you go. Here you go. Batteries included. There you go. Have another one. Here's one for you. <laughs> <laughs> Men, I want to thank each of you for joining our army. Uh, a little help, please. please. <gasps> We have a very big job to do, but together and with God's help, I'm sure we'll be victorious. <clears throat> You've got to be kidding. <sighs> All right, here's the thing. Evidently, there's too many of us. So, whoever doesn't want to be here, you're sure about this? Okay. Whoever doesn't want to be here can go home. Can we keep the flashlight? Yes, you can keep the flashlight. Oh, here we go. I got home. My flashlight, I get to keep it. All right then. We're now a smaller but still mighty crew. And I'm sure that with God's help, we'll be. <clears throat> what? I said they put it me. You gotta be kidding me. All right. Everyone take five and have a slushie. So this is a test too? I don't get it. There are still too many. But we're outnumbered by more than ten to one. Yeah, point. Well, shouldn't we at least tell them that this is another test? No, that's the point of this particular test. But how's drinking a slushie going to show us who should or shouldn't be in God's army? <laughs> ah, brain freeze! <laughs> Ow! Ow! <laughs> Oh, okay, I get it. Oh. All right, men. Tonight, we go to battle. Not to cause problems, but uh, do we get any weapons? You've already got them. We will defeat the Midianites with our horns and flashlights. Flashlights? Oh. <laughs> Okay, we'll split up into three different groups and surround the enemy here, here, and here. Now, bring the enemy's troops in. Uh, uh. 
Sure are a lot of them, aren't there? That's just what I was thinking. You doing okay? Me? Sure. Okay, just checking. Did you ever have a hard time trusting God? Oh, me? No. I see him every day. <laughs> I know how glorious he is. I know he never breaks his promise. I also know how much he loves you, because he told me. Thanks. You know what I think? I think you're doing great. It's easy for an angel to trust God, but you have faith in something you've never even seen. I admire that. Trust him, Gideon. He'll never let you down. Hey, God, it's me. You and I both know I can't do this on my own. But you can. And that's good enough for me. I pray you'll be with us tonight and that your will be done. That's it, I guess. Oh, one more thing. You could have chosen anybody, but you chose me. Thanks. Amen. Welcome back to WMID. Music for the attacking hordes. Uh, yes, hello. I'd like to request uh, Samson's bringing down the house. I'm telling you, it was the strangest dream. Somehow we were totally defeated by the Hebrew army. I mean, wiped out. Yeah, right. Like that's ever gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. Crazy, huh? It's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Nobody can beat us, can they? I didn't need another sign, God, but thanks. Men, this is it. The Lord has delivered the enemy into our hands. He will do the work. All we have to do is trust him that he'll do what he says. Are you with me? Yes, yes sir! I want three groups around the rim of the valley. Wait for my signal. You men come with me. You go to the south end, and so we don't split the peas, you go up the middle. Did he just make a split pea joke? What's playing? chose me for this time and this place. All I did was trust him that he'd do what he said. And he did. Good job, Gideon. Uh, here, I got you a little something. Hail, mighty man of valor. I'll treasure it always. 
And I know just where I'll keep it. In my nightstand. Right next to my bed. And that's how it really happened. And there you have it. Today's parade is celebrating Gideon, perhaps the most humble soldier in Israel's history. A man who learned how to trust God. Indeed he did. And when we trust God and put aside our fears... That's when we're victorious, too. I couldn't have said it better myself. Whoa. Holy mackerel, that was cool. Good one, nice job. Uh, that wasn't my story. I didn't really know much about Gideon before this. You didn't? Well, I knew that he left Bibles in hotel rooms, but that's about it. Oh, oh right, yeah. right. Okay. But how does he yeah, get yeah, into yeah, the rooms yeah. without a chimney? Okay. Yeah, there, and there's that, too. That was an awfully nice story. But whose was it? Hi, guys. I figured you might need a hand. I'm glad you liked it. Oh, <laughs> that was that tomato. <laughs> He's always good for a story. Oh, yeah. Glad to help. All in all, you guys did a pretty good job. Not bad for never having done anything. I'm feeling a renewed sense of vigor. Not not doing anything has never felt better. Hey, way to go on the silly song. I don't want to talk about it. Why not? It was funny. Those cute little wiggly turtles. Y yeah, hilarious. Uh, let's drop it and move on. I'm telling you, you're a natural. Right? It's time to talk about what we learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. And God has a lot to say in his book. His holy, 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 holy book. Nice. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our zone is there, we'll take a looky, 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 look. We are different colors. Oh, isn't that incredible? <laughs> Super. Okay, here goes. Uh, in the story of George Mueller, we learned that if we're doing what God asks us to do, he'll meet all our needs. Way to go. Well put. And in the story of Gideon, we learned that if we're doing what God asks us to do, we can trust him with the outcome. Mm, he's a pro. Let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us today. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So, Rachel, I think you should show kindness to the new girl in your classroom. Being kind to everyone is something God asks all of us to do. And if your old friends don't like it, then you can trust God that he'll help you find new friends who will. He makes it look so easy. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Wait, hold on a sec, Bob. I want to thank you for allowing us to do something. You're welcome. It's been nice seeing you guys show some initiative. Speaking of which, now that we got one story under our belts, I was thinking... Ta-da! You want to make a movie? That looks hard. Yeah, I don't know. That's a lot of work. Oh, come on. Doesn't it get your pulse going? Don't you want to be up there on the big screen, sailing the high seas, fighting scallywags and ne'er-do-wells? <laughs> That's all the time we have for today. Remember, kids, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Bye! Bye. Are you serious? If I can get the funding. It is time for Classy Songs with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a classy song. Waiting for the trolley, he had a hat. My high silk hat. He wore it high upon his head so proudly. A beautiful hat. My high silk hat. A hat like this just makes him feel so grandly. Now fancy this and fancy that. The splendor of this hat in all its majesty. Like a king in a royal cap. I feel so swell and handsome. 
them in my hat. I bet that others wish they had. In fact, a hat as this, a hat as that, a hat so high, and a high so hat. Oh, Mr. Art Bugatti, now what do you think of that? Now his hat was not all he was so proud be. I must, in fact, share more than that. For a pawn. His lap the sat the treat so fungy of chocolate this and chocolate that deliciousness that makes him feel so dandy a chocolate bliss a chocolate snack I have my chocolate placed upon my lap I feel so good you just cannot top that I have my snack a chocolate pack Upon his hat. And chocolate snack. So beneath his hat he thought and pondered. What should I do to save my hat? He thought and contemplated as he perspired beneath his hat. Upon his hat. He feared his chocolate treats would soon retire and to a pool. A chocolate bath. I won't feel grand if I take off my hat. The sun's getting hot. Well, not like that. Oh, hurry, Mr. Trolley, before my dad burn his coast flat. He decided to forego his looks so dashing to save his hat. And eat a snack. So he placed the treats upon the seat beside him and put his hat on top of that. Oh, please. Oh, please, oh, please. Don't anybody sit close to me. Sit close to me. Upon my hat. Upon my hat. I ask if all of you could be so kind. And just stand back away from my snack. A great big squash just sat upon my hat. A great big squash just squished my hat real flat. He squashed my hat, he made it flat. He squished my snack. Oh, what of that? Oh, tell me anybody. Now, what do you think of that? A great big squash just sat upon my hat. Oh, golly. Uh, what's your name? They've never given me a name. I've been around since show one, and I still don't have a name. Now, what do you think of that? And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. And what would you like to drink? I'll just have water, please. And could I have it in a glass this time? Hmm, let me check my records. Just as I suspected, good thing I stopped and checked it. My pad is stained and blotted from liquids you spilled on it. I'm afraid the jig is up. You must use a sippy cup. Stop! Don't bring me a sippy cup. Haven't spilled since yesterday. Water won't stain anyway. Bring a mug, bring a jug, just don't bring a sippy cup. Let me check with the bus boy. Is he the one? <gasps> it's you! Every time I fill it, he turns around and spills it. I've bought a hundred blotters, cause you can't hold your waters. This time I'm not mopping up. You, you must, must use a sippy cup. No! Don't bring me a sippy cup. They'll be making fun of me. Put a pail in front of me. Bring a mug, bring a jug, just don't bring a sippy cup. Well, I could ask the maitre d'. This is impossible, he paddles up on cafe. You take me for a fool, a restaurant's not a pool. Take his glass and lock it up. The pickle gets a sippy cup. Wait, don't bring me a sippy cup. This time I'm not gonna spill. I'm pretty sure he will. Spilling soda's not a crime. If it is, I'll do time. Just don't bring a sippy cup. Order, order in the 
court. I judge you the clumsy sort. By the dictates of our laws, I sentence you to safety's laws. It's the governor. Yes, I see. Very well. Thank you, governor. <clears throat> Give me back that sippy cup. You've been granted sippy's day. This must be my lucky day. This must be his lucky day. Bring a mug, bring a jug. I'll bring an absorbent rug. You, you don't, don't need a sippy cup. Compliments of the house. Grape juice. Grape juice? Oops. Sorry. This has been Silly Songs with Laddie. Tune in next time to hear Laddie say, I'll take that sippy cup. Hi, kids. Welcome to Veggie Tales. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. And we're here to answer your questions. Hey, Bob, you remember the ballad of Little Joe? Uh, yeah. Wasn't that a great show? W well, sure, Larry. It was terrific. You just gotta love westerns, don't ya? Well, you don't have to, uh, I suppose, but I do enjoy a good western every now and then. Great. Today's letter is from Wesley Thomas of Carlsbad, New Mexico. Wesley writes, Dear Bob and Larry, can you do a sequel to The Ballad of Little Joe? Your friend, Wesley. Uh, Larry, that's a nice letter, but we answer letters for kids who are having moral and ethical dilemmas. Ethel who? You know, kids who have questions about what's right and wrong, who want to know what the right thing to do is. Exactly. So to Wesley, I say, a sequel to Little Joe is the right thing to do. But does the letter say anything about having problems listening to his parents or, or losing interest in school? No, but now that you mention it, I did get this one from Mr. Sammy Tidwell of Brentwood, Tennessee. Dear Bob and Larry, don't miss this exciting opportunity to take advantage of our low interest rates. Who's screening your mail? No. Look, Larry, I'm sure a sequel to The Ballad of Little Joe would be nice, but, uh, well, listen here. Dear Bob and Larry, I fight with my brother a lot. In church this week, I learned that I'm supposed to be loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, good, gentle, and self-controlled. I know God wants me to be all that to my brother, but I don't think I'm strong enough. What do I do? Your friend, Elise. You see, Larry, that's the kind of letter we answer on the show. <gasps> Wait a minute. I've got the perfect story for Elise. You do? Yep. It's the story of Mo and the Big Exit. Uh, Mo and the Big Exit? Or as the Indians called it, the Lone Stranger. Either way, it's Little Joe Part 2. Roll film! In the great painted desert a long time ago, Twixt the feet of the Rockies and the Bighorn Plateau Lived a man of great calling, a man of great skill In the city of Dodgeball they sing of him still Oh, lone stranger, your mask hides your face Who you are we can't say Oh, lone stranger, they sing hi-ho sliver away. To tell the story of the lone stranger, you gotta start with the first big hero of Dodgeball City. That'd be Little Joe. Now, Little Joe was what you might call a visionary, but his dreams ticked off his brothers who sold him off to a group of desperados. Oh dear. And after traveling in a ziggy-zaggy line, he ended up in Dodgeball City, where his hard work and scrupulous character <laughs> landed him in the pokey. But with God's help, he got the mayor out of a bind by figuring out that hard times were on the way. The mayor granted him a reprieve and a job in emergency management. Little Joe organized the town, gathered up seven years for the grub, and saved the day. Yeah! 
He also saved his own family. He forgave his brothers for selling him off and set them all up with nice lives right there in Dodgeball. But times changed. Well, after little Joe and his brothers passed, their descendants multiplied like prairie dogs till the new mayor and the people of the town started to worry that they'd be overrun. So they set taskmasters over the sons of little Joe to afflict them with heavy burdens and keep them down. They set them to dig in with shovels and picks and drove them to building with boulders and bricks till tired and battered they fell to their knees and cried to the heavens deliver us please oh lone stranger your mask hides your face who you are we can't say oh lone stranger we sing high Slitter away. Oh, lone stranger, we work like the Dickens, but don't get no pay. Oh, lone stranger, please come take us away. We really don't want to stay. I've had a really bad day. Something wrong, Mayor? There's too many of them, Wyatt. Ah, uh, too many of who? Too many workers. Look at them all. Isn't that a good thing? I mean, you can't dig the Grand Canyon, build Monument Valley, and paint the painted desert with just a few guys. And what happens if they decide all at once that they're no longer interested in working for free? Ah, I see your point. Well, what do you want me to do? Thin the herd. Thin the herd? You know, make sure they're not so many. Sure, I gather up all the baby boys and send them up the river. <gasps> up the river? Up the river. Now, the mayor thought his plan was awfully clever. But God had his eye on one special boy he was going to use to turn this whole mess around. Told when you pan for gold, I quest of Illinois. <laughs> it ain't rare to find a bear, but not a baby boy. I think I'll name you Nugget. And if you do, one thing is true if to kindness you are prone, you'll line your pack with bubble wrap and take that baby home. I know. What about Mo? It's Indian for looking for gold and finding a baby. Singing hi ya yippee ki -yo. she picked him up and named him Mo. Singing hi ya yippee ki -yo. she took that baby home. She named that baby Mo. Sincerely yours, Mayonnaise. Okay, read that back to me. Da 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 dash dash. Hi, Daddy. Dash. Oh, hi, sweetheart. Any luck today? I found a baby. Oh, that's nice. What? Oh, little Mo began to grow, but not as strong as others. Couldn't hold a cup or measure up to his big zucchini brothers. 
to compensate little Mo got great at working on his draw. It knocked you flat if standing at the wrong end of that ball. Singing hi ya yippee ki yo, look out for that mighty throw. Singing hi ya yippee ki yo, man that boy can throw, the boy that we call Mo. In his defense, it made good sense, but made his mother nervous to take those skills and pay his bills through a life in public service. He joined the Corps of Badger or Zucchinis for companions. With mom's consent, soon off he went to guard over the canyons. Singing hi-ya, yippee ki standing high and looking low. Singing hi-yo, the boy can throw, that's our brother Mo. Singing hi-ya, yippee ki standing high and looking low. Singing hi-ya, yippee ki he's not that big we know. But man, that boy can throw, the boy that we call Mo. help you. I don't need your help. I was just trying to... Well, it's too late for that, isn't it? Well, it must be nice growing up pampered in the mayor's house, instead of out here breaking your back along with the rest of your kin. How did you know? Oh, your sister told a few friends, and they told a few friends, and uh, well, I reckon everybody knows by now. They do? Besides, you're the spitting image of little Joe himself. Of course, he'd be spitting if he saw you wearing that badge. Traitor. Huh? Everything okay here, Mo? Uh, yeah, er, er, everything's fine. Sure it's fine when the mayor's your granddaddy. We all know your rightful place is down there. He giving you a hard time? Yeah, what if I am? Don't talk back to me. Oh. It's okay, Bill. No, it's not okay. Uh, oh. uh, no one talks back to me. Especially a low-life descendant of Little Joe. Leave him alone, Bill. Looks like you need a little lesson in respecting your superiors. Oh! Leave him alone, Bill. Oh! That's enough. Stop! Huh? <laughs> yeah, right. Ah! you. If the mayor finds out, I'm a goner. Come on, guys. We're family. You gotta hide me. Oh, what? You got to whack us, too? What's going on here? <gasps> huh? If you find him, bring him to me. This time, I'll see to it myself he goes up the river. Now, there weren't much for Mo to do, but head for the hills. He did a few loop-de-loops to keep the mayor and his gang off his trail, and eventually, Mo made it to the Rockies where he was safe. <coughs> well, except for the bears. <coughs> And that's the thing about mountains. They got bears. Well, after he lost that bear, he... Whoop! <laughs> bear's still around. Where the deer 
discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day but fortunately for mo bears aren't the only ones who live in the mountains come on zippy are you thirsty boy Oh, wow, Zippy. It's... it's heavier than last time. Not that tall. You should see my brothers. Oh, <laughs> you dropped your hat. <laughs> Thanks. Nice buffalo. What were you doing at the bottom of the well? Bear. Bear? Not again. Hey! I'm tired of running, and I'm not going back in that well! All right, Bear. Find another cucumber to chase. Whew. I'm gonna hang on to this. Wow, that was an awfully brave thing to do. Mm. You think so? Mm -hmm. <laughs> My name is Sally. And this is Zippy. Mm. Hi, Sally and Zippy. Pleased to meet ya. My name's Mo. When the larks go tweet, a tweet a dee -a -dee, and the doves say coo, a coo dee -a -dee and the sun hangs high in the Rocky Mountain sky, you know it must be love. You must be starving. Would you like to join us for dinner? Well, ma'am, that's mighty kind of you to ask. I'd love to. Now, some matches are made in phosphorus factories, while others are made in heaven. <laughs> Either way, it all starts with a little chemistry. Oh, when the ducks go quack, a wacky, wacky, whack, and the owls say hoo, a hoo do you, you, and the stars shine bright in the Rocky Mountain night. You know it must be love. Well, Sally and her folks were mighty thankful to Mo for saving her from that bear. And Mo was mighty thankful to feel appreciated. And with all of that cordialness and niceness going around, it weren't long before they were all thankful for other things. Yep, Mo and Sally got hitched and started a family. Oh, when the bees go buzz, so buzzy buzzy buzz, and the little butterflies a flutter cutter by, and the clouds float fair through the Rocky Mountain air. You know it must be love. Mo took the domestic life like butter to a biscuit. Gone were the days of Canyon Garden and dodgeball throwing why. Anymore, Mo couldn't hit the broad side of a barn with a dodgeball, nor did he try. He was content caring for his family and walking Zippy. Oh, thank the Lord above. You know it must be love. Come on, boy. Let's go for a walk. Mm. Did you remember Sliver? Yep. Never leave home without it. Mo named his walking stick Sliver, on account it was a sliver of wood he pulled off that tree the day he met Sally. He never went anywhere without it, what with the bears and all. Now with most stories, this could be what you might call a happy ending. Look at that. He's even walking off into the sunset with his buffalo. But this is different from most stories, and I expect it's just getting started. Hello? Who's there? All right, Bear. I've got Sliver. I suggest you stay away. Ah! Mo had never seen a burning tumbleweed before. 
This tumbleweed was not only on fire, it seemed to have a mind of its own. Now, if this were just an ordinary burning and talking tumbleweed, the story should have just ended with the sunset. But God himself was using this tumbleweed to speak to Mo. God told Mo he had a job for him to do. What? Boomy? God told him that he had heard the cries of Little Joe's family, and that he was sending Mo to go to the mayor and demand he let them leave Dodgeball City. But who am I to go to the mayor? Look at me, I'm puny. I used to be pretty good with a dodgeball, but I put that behind me. God told Mo that he would help him, that he would be Mo's strength. But, but what if the people don't believe me when I tell them it's you who sent me? Tell them I am who I am, God said. Tell them I am has sent me to you. Okay, got it. I am has sent me to you. But, okay, what if, you know, they're still like, yeah, right. This? Oh, this is Sliver. It's my walking stick and bear repellent. Throw it on the ground? Okay. God told Mo to pick up the snake. That's a rattlesnake? Highly venomous? Huh? Okay, God. I think I can do this. But, can I ask a favor? I've got this thing about public speaking. Really, it terrifies me. What? Imagine everyone in their underwear? Yeah, tried it. Didn't work. Scared the willies out of me. God told Mo he'd have someone waiting for him outside of Dodgeball City to help him out with his public speaking, too. So, Mo went back to tell his family he needed to go on a business trip. God's business. Come on, Zippy. Thanks for the new outfit, Sally. You're welcome, Mo. You're gonna need it. It'd be best if the mayor doesn't recognize you. He'll have you sent up the river. Oh, I almost forgot. You be careful now. I'm gonna miss you, Sally. Gherkin, you listen to your ma now, you hear? Goodbye, Mo. Now you go do what God says. You're a good woman, Sally. All right, Zippy, let's go. <laughs> Zippy? Hi-ho, Sliver! Away! <laughs> Bye, boys. Bye, Zippy, and don't forget to take care of well each other. Say hi to the mayor for me. <laughs> You good at public speaking? Do you ever have to use the imagine everyone in their underwear trick? Mo! Shh! How did you know my name? Well, I'm Aaron, your brother. What are you talking about? You're not a zucchini. Wait a minute. You're my brother, brother. That's right. I was adopted. Plus, your wanted poster is still up all over town. Anyone within 100 miles of here knows your name. You'd better keep that mask on. I didn't recognize you with the mask, which is good. The mayor still has it in for you. Mo told Aaron everything God had sent him to say and about all the miraculous signs he had commanded him to perform. Ah! <laughs> I do the talking, you do the thing with the stick, God does the rest, and we all go free? 
Exactly. Huh. All right. Well, I won't have to sell rubber tomahawks anymore. Not unless you want to. I'm in! Don't you get bored out here? Oh, dreadfully. But it beats working in the canyon. You know, my sensitive skin, it just, it doesn't hold up. <laughs> Look at there! Huh? This can't be good. Ooh, it's well, that. Hope you don't get that hat in your head. I've never seen him before. Him. I've seen him somewhere. Isn't that the rubber tomahawk guy? Don't that be him? Who is that masked man? He must be a stranger. I'm sorry, I had to... Yes? Wait a minute. You're that worker who sells souvenirs outside of town, aren't you? Isn't that boring? Eh, beats the canyon. Huh. Who's this stranger? He come with you, or did he come alone? Ah, uh, yes. He's the, uh, he's the lone... The lone stranger. The lone stranger, eh? You know how to talk, stranger? Ah, uh, he's a bit shy. He prefers to have me speak for him. Did you forget to buy a backbone with that new cowboy hat, stranger? Well, what do you want? I don't have all day. Ahem. This is what the Lord God says. Let my people go. What's that? Let us go. Set us free. We want to leave. No more digging and stacking and selling rubber tomahawks. Adios, amigo. Let you go? God said so. Yeah, well, we'll just see what the mayor has to say about... Oh, sorry. What is it? He's only hauling 20 wheelbarrows an hour. I'm old. 30's the minimum. I can't do 30. I'm 80. 30's the minimum. Oh, you drive 30 at my age, you ungrateful. That's enough. You heard the god. The rule is 30. If you can't do 30, it's up the river. No. Please. Take him away. <laughs> Hold this. But, but the plan! Oh. Nobody draws a dodgeball in the mayor's office but me. You want me to let you go, eh? Well, how's this? Sixty barrels an hour, and that goes for everyone. And you're gonna dig without shovels or picks to boot. How are we gonna do that? You figure it out. And you... You can go back and tell your people you just made their lives even more miserable! Now get back to work! Wah! Needless to say, Mo and Aaron's first meeting with the mayor did not go well. And not only did they not get their request granted, but the mayor more than doubled the workload for everyone. And in case you're wondering, the children of little Joe were none too appreciative. Oh, that mask guy's name is the Lone Stranger. He's the one to thank for this. He's the biggest goofball to come around here since that Mo guy. Remember him? That guy was a piece of work. Let's go home, Zippy. I'm just making it worse. I don't know what I was thinking. Hmm. What are you doing? You can't leave now. But you've seen what I've done. They're better off without me. That's true. Hmm? But, but that's the whole point. When you just rely on yourself, on your own strength. I do the talking, you do the thing with the stick, and God does the rest. That was the plan, remember? God's plan. Well, I guess I did kind of blow it in there. Kinda. And if I'm not mistaken, that's not the only time you've gotten yourself into trouble with a dodgeball. But that was a long time ago, and only because I was trying to help. All your life, you wanted to be strong. But what God has called you to do here is far beyond your own strength. So I can't do this on my own. I can only do this if I let God do this.
La ta da ta da, when the earth was born, who lit the light in the dark? God did. That's right. When the rain came down, who drew the plans for an ark? God did. Uh huh. Precisely. And in case you ever wondered, when old Abe turned a hundred, who took the reins and gave him diapers to change? God did. Exactly. And when the... All right, all right, I get your point. It isn't my strength that's going to help my people. It's God's. And since God called me to do this, he'll supply the strength I need. I'm going to stick to the plan. So, Mo and Aaron headed back to Dodgeball City to follow God's plan. I've got two more verses. Now y'all sit tight to see how things turn out. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry, the podcast. Check it, me old dude. Yo, me and the boys had an idea about another way to tell this Mo story. Right, boys? Yo! <laughs> Stick with the Western. See you guys. Great granddad loves his little coochie coochie coochie. Your mama's gonna be back soon, you cutie coochie coochie coochie. Who's your favorite great granddad? Who's gonna be the baby someday? Who's gonna hoot you coochie coochie? Oh, uh, <clears throat> what do you want? We've come back to assure you that God means business. What's that supposed to mean? If you do not set the workers free, you will face dire consequences. Excuse me? Hi, ho, sliver! Away! So then, you'll turn all our sticks into snakes? Ooh, I'm so scared. That's the sorriest snake I ever seen. You couldn't do better than that. I was on the spot. Big deal! So you're better at snakes. I'm still not letting anyone go. Get back to your souvenir shack and, and take what's his name with you before I lose my patience. So, what's next? 
Now in the Old West, taking a bath was a special occasion. And for the mayor, that occasion came every Saturday morning. But the mayor's bath was about to turn sour. <coughs> Along with the rest of his week. Good morning, Mayor. Uh, you two again? Uh, didn't I tell God you God has sent me to tell you, let my people go! Uh, guards! Hi, ho Sliver! Away! Juice. <laughs> well, the river turned red, and the mayor wouldn't listen. Let my people go! Bubba! Hi, ho, Sliver! Away! But the mayor still wouldn't budge. So one more plague was visited upon Dodgeball City. The worst, saddest one of all. Oh, it was terrible, but the mayor, well, he had brought it on himself. Now God told the children of Little Joe to place a sign on their door to keep them safe. But for the rest of Dodgeball City, all of the firstborn boys were taken by the river. Bo, the mayor would like to see us. Leave us. Go away, all of you. Get out of Dodgeball City. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way. There they go. Good riddance. We're going to have to figure out who's going to do all the work now. 
Who was that masked man? It's Mo. Huh? The lone stranger. He, he's Mo. He, he just took off his mask. Give me those. Mo. Round up the posse. I got a score to settle. Death Valley. Hmm. Huh? God wants us to go through Death Valley? We can't do that! We'll be barbecued! Maybe we can just go around and catch up with the cloud on the other side. I don't know if... Uh, Sir? Uh, not now. How many could we fit on your buffalo? Can anybody bring ah. flip-flops? Can't you see we have a problem? It's the mayor! And he's got a bossy! Can you not hit the floor? Thanks a lot, Mo! We should have never left Dodgeball City! Yeah, we'd be better off serving the mayor than dying in the desert. Perhaps I could ride out and ask the mayor to take it easy on us. Did anyone bring any dodgeballs? Aaron, the plan, remember? I do the thing with the stick. Hi-ho, Sliver! Away! you get away again. Come on, boys! Painted desert a long time ago, twixt the feet of the Rockies and the Bighorn Plateau, lived a man of great calling, a man of great skill, to trust the Almighty, his plan to fulfill. Oh, you did it, Mo. Nah, God did. I just followed the plan. Oh, long stranger, your mask hides 
hides your face, who you are we can't say. Oh, lone stranger, we sing high ho sliver away. It's time for a manna buffet. We sing high ho sliver. Larry, you were right. That was the perfect story for Elise. See, I told you. What a great story about God's strength and following his directions. Come again? You know, God's strength. The whole point of the story. Oh, yeah, but I was thinking about the whole fighting with the brother thing. Elise is having a problem fighting with her brother, just like Mo. Except his brothers mostly fought with him. What's your point? Well... All Elise needs is a big stick. Come again? Yeah, he should leave her alone then, don't you think? Larry, that's totally not the point. It's time to talk about what we've learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. And God has a lot to say in his book. If the stick doesn't work, a dodgeball might. No. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone, and now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Larry, that was the perfect story for Elise's question, because it was about God's strength and following his directions. When Mo did things his own way, he just made things worse. To free his people, Mo had to rely on God and follow his plan. Oh. Yeah, and there's that, too. Let's see if Cordy has a verse for us today. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Psalm 28, 7a. So we can call on God to help us, and follow his directions when we know we can't do it by ourselves. Just like Mo. Cool! So, Elise, you're right. You aren't strong enough to do everything God asks you to do. Neither was Mo. But just like Mo, God can give you the strength to do what he asks. If you let God be your strength and follow his directions, you'll be amazed at what he can do through you. And Wesley, you asked for a sequel to Little Joe, and, well, you got one. Two for one. How about that? You know, Mo's story reminded me a lot of the story of Moses in the Bible. Oh, well, yeah, now that you mention it. But it was a little different, in a Western kind of way. Yahoo. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Goodbye! Vegetarian, 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 veget